Dear brothers and sisters, this is the third session of the Ten Commandment series, focusing on the Third Commandment. Today's Bible passage reads, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave him unpunished who takes his name in vain. The Lord will not leave him unpunished. In other words, is God condemning you to be sinful? Romans chapter 6 verse 23 tells us the wages of sin is death. This means that those condemned a sinner by God suffer the punishment of death and cannot receive salvation. Despite God laying down these serious commands, there are some people who forget about who forget that these commands even exist within the Ten Commandments. This is why some who consider themselves to be a devout believer do not hold God's name in high esteem but use it in vain instead. If you feared God with all your heart and desired to live in the truth, you wouldn't do this even subconsciously. May you use today's words to look back on yourself once again, be of sober mind, keep yourselves from acting rudely before God, and always fear Him. Dear brothers and sisters, taking the name of God in vain means using the holy name of God in an incorrect and ungodly manner. These include expressing personal thoughts as if they were God's, acting upon personal decisions and saying they were from God, making false oaths, and joking around in God's name, etc. This also applies to people who don't normally seek God, but say, God is indifferent. How something like this could happen if God was alive? In the face of some unexpected event, God the Creator, who is worthy of all glory and honor, how could God not consider us sinless if we, as creatures, take His name in vain? The in the Job lectures, Job's friends and Elihu spoke as they were like spoke spokesperson of God and judged Job, condemned Job. This was also taking God's name in vain. We've learned. You may wonder, is this really, is that really wrong? Is this really, really wrong? But, as you, as I will, if you fear, if you re revere, if you honor someone, but if you speak recklessly about him, if you speak as if it was his will, this is being rude, discourteous. Put yourself, think about yourselves. Let's say someone says that something is your will, even though it is not. S someone says that it is your will. They use your, use our name. Then we won't be happy. If he seeks his own benefit by using our name and puts us in trouble and makes us into a bad person, this is very displeasing to us. This is like this among people. But what about our God? This is taking God's name in vain, of course. As I told you in the... We should not misunderstand God and we should also pretend to know God's word and use His word in our own favor. The first reason that using God's name in vain is classed as sin is that it means you do not have faith in God. 
Some philosophers who study the meaning of life say that God is dead. And some people also recklessly say that there is no God. Many years ago, a Soviet astronaut said, I have been to space, but there is no God. An astronaut would know how small the space he explores is compared to the entire universe. But how foolish it would be to say there is no God simply because you explored a small part of space and did not physically see God who created the entire universe. Psalm chapter 53 verse 1 says, The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt and have committed abominable injustice. There is no one who does good. Anyone who looks toward heaven, earth, and all things with a humble heart is more than able to find the evidence of God the Creator. There are also numerous evangelists who testify to the Lord and the living God. But while you do not believe in God due to a hardened heart, if you carelessly speak of Him, how could God not class this as sin? Brothers and sisters, the second reason that using God's name in vain is classed as sin is that it is mocking God. To mock is to look down or regard in a derisive manner. How could anyone dare mock God, the Creator, and not be without sin? Psalm chapter 96 verse 4 tells us, For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 16 also says, Who alone possesses immortality and dwells in approachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. Exodus chapter 33 verse 20 even records, You cannot see my face, for no, for no man can see me and live. God is so great and exalted that we cannot dare even look at Him. In the past, those without the knowledge of God but with a good conscience used respectful language and honorifics when talking about heaven. For example, they use honorifics even in saying, It's raining. Despite not knowing God, they at least vaguely believe that there is the Almighty Creator who sends rain from heaven. So, they'd use honorifics even in referring to raining. In Korea, we don't carelessly, we don't carelessly call even our parents or people we greatly admire on a casual, first-name basis. When we have to mention their names, we would use honorifics or titles out of respect. Then, how reverent we should be when speaking about God the Creator of all things and the ruler of all life. At one point, the Israelites refrained from even saying God's name out loud when reading the Bible. When the name Jehovah appeared in the Bible, the Israelites would instead say Adonai, which means my Lord. For example, in the Bible, when you read the Old Testament, when the word Jehovah appeared, they went and washed their hands, and they didn't even say Jehovah out loud. They instead said Adonai. For example, the phrase, Great is Jehovah, would be said as, My Lord is great. Of course, this doesn't mean we have to do the same, but it's important to remember to have a humble heart when stating God's name. When you read the Bible, we shouldn't read it in a 
random attitude, random posture. We have to sit upright in reading the Bible. This is also an act of honoring God. These days, there are some people who say they believe in God, but disrespect and mock His name. For example, as they make meaningless jokes, they incorrectly quote Bible verses or use God's name. The word is God, which means belittling scripture is the same as mocking God. Would it be right to tell someone, for example, you seek your own benefits, you you, you say to your family or your acquaintances or to your brother, you want to have something that they have. While, for example, while you are eating, you, you want to have that last piece of pizza left on the plate. Then you use God's word. You have to love your neighbor as yourself. Then would you yield that last piece of pizza to me? Then, this is uh, quoting God's word in seeking his own benefit. This is not right. You shouldn't use or quote God's word in your jokes or in your... Though, though we will revisit this... Though we will <coughs> Though we will revisit this later in the third point, it is also mocking God to lie in His name. This includes saying that your personal thoughts were spoken by God or inspired by the Holy Spirit. When you counsel or advise someone, you say things like, God told me that you have to fast and God will bless you. God inspired my heart to say this to you. You know, Holy Spirit would inspire His own heart. When Holy Spirit will give him awakening to that person, you, you have to ponder over whether it is really from the Holy Spirit, but you just say things according to your thoughts, and you see a problem with a, see a person with a problem, and you want to advise him to offer a fast, and you involve your own thoughts and counsel that person to. Offer a fasting, saying that I, you are inspired by God. When you pray, you have your own thoughts. There are fleshly thoughts coming up in your head during your prayer. When you ponder over yourself, when you ponder, reflect on your day. Of course, some thoughts are necessary. You have to. You have to. Reflect on your day in your prayer. You try to find wrongdoings in your day and confess that these are necessary thoughts. You have to offer your heart as well as you reflect on your day. But they are your thoughts, on thoughts. But you cannot say that. These are from the Holy Spirit. Even though you, you have some thoughts coming up in your prayer, you have to check whether it is truly from the Holy Spirit. But some people say, but some people say that the Holy Spirit inspired me. I, I received that inspiration from the Spirit. They should not make those expressions. Let's look at an example for better understanding. If someone implies that I, seen a pastor, said something when I didn't, is this showing respect? How would I feel if I find out How would I feel if I found out that someone said that it was my will or my orders so that others would act in his favor? I will feel so... Let's say if one of my workers do that repeatedly, then I would not trust such a worker. I would, he would lose my trust. If you 
there are people who deliver his boss's word with uh, even if their boss didn't say something they create a create a my members don't do that this is obvious lies but some church workers don't know the intentions of their leader so they put their own meaning put their own they deliver their leader's message Uh, for example, mommy members don't have, have little information about me. They, you don't know what my tastes are. Actually, church workers and members don't know that. Because it's not been a long time since I became senior pastor. If I have long served as senior pastor, well, you would know what I like or what I dislike. But people don't know. But there are rumors that senior pastor like this, even though I don't like it. I ponder over why. For example, when I ate some snacks with church workers, there are people who there are people who who serve me like uh, leaders of the church. When they serve me, I enjoy it. Whatever they serve me, I enjoy it. Because they saw me enjoying that food. They think that I like that food. But it's different from it, enjoying that food. It's different from my, that being my favorite food. There are maybe many fruits, but there could be my... Let's say someone gave me a watermelon. Because they served me, I enjoyed eating it. I enjoy eating it, but I, actually that is not my favorite food, for example. But the church lo- workers saw me enjoying watermelon, and they think that watermelon is my favorite food, and they deliver the words that the you know, pastor likes the watermelon the most. And this is how rumors are created. That's why, even though In, some, in other cases, there, let's say I like some snack years ago, and I told people that I like that snack, and, but it was like 5 years ago, 10 years ago, but there's no guarantee that I still like that snack. Nowadays, I don't like that snack, but people still say that s i n a p a s t o r like that snack, and people, when I hear that, I think, I no longer eat that snack. I no longer like that. When you deliver words, your knowledge is not perfect. We always talked about this in the lectures on Job. That's why misunderstandings are created and trust is lost and people are alienated from others. For example, when people have to sign some document, when I have to sign some document, I have, I, for example, when some people deliver my words, and senior pastor said that you are wrong, you have to do this better. As they deliver my words, they go against my intention. There are rumors that there are many of such cases. So, if you have any question, you have to ask the secretary and you have to double-check the fact. And my secretary was hired this year. But formerly, he was a member of the Canaan Mission, leader of the Canaan Mission. When she served me as a leader of the Canaan Mission, and she, she used to hear information from others and prepared what she should serve me. And as she became secretary, and, and she found out that people's information are wrong. Actually, as she was close to me, and 
And I, so I told my secretary that actually I don't eat much. I don't eat much. And even though people give me a lot of food, I cannot eat them all. And I told, thankfully, and and the secretary also, my secretary also found out that the information she knew was wrong, and she regrets that why she didn't try to find out the facts about God as well. We have to know about His will deeply. Then we will not see God as a fearful one or frightening one. We ha- and we will know that He is a loving God. Elihu didn't know about God. And he concluded that God wouldn't refine, give trials to a righteous person. In relationship with others, if you want to serve others better, you have to know another person more deeply. You have to, when you hear rumors about this is senior pastor's will, if this is the truth, you can obey that, but if you, but if if it causes the conflicts of interest, you have to ask the secretary and know the answer. And the secretary team will also ask me, and they will give you the right answer, and things will go in an orderly way, and like these cases, if uh, it is not right to say worthless words in other people's names, moreover, it would be extremely rude to use God's name in vain. The Almighty God knows the hearts and thoughts of all mankind and their words and actions, whether good or wicked, like the back of His hands. Like the back of His hands. God watches everyone with His blazing eyes and judges each person according to their own actions. Those who truly believe in God would not dare commit the sin of mocking God by taking His name in vain. It's important to make sure we become God-fearing believers and stay cautious with our words so as not to commit a sin of mocking God. Brothers and sisters, there is another point to keep in mind. Those who truly fear God will always be cautious in everything related to God's kingdom, not just His name. As mentioned earlier, they would use or quote the scriptures in a reverent manner, reverent manner, if they fear God from their hearts. They also handle the they also handle the church sanctuary and God's items with care and respect, considering them more precious than their own possessions. They meticulously deal with the church finances, even when the amount is very small. If you accidentally broke a church mug, window, or mirror, would you pretend to have done it? Would you, would you pretend to not have done it? It's important that you never do so. No matter how trivial or small, they are considered God's holy items. It's crucial to learn to cherish and be more prudent towards God's belongings. It's also extremely it's also extremely important to remember that mission groups membership fees must be spent according to the leadership's decisions and never be used for personal reasons. Let's say you are accountant of a mission group. You think that someone is in need. You you arbitrarily make a decision and help him. And you only help people in need according to your knowledge. You should not use the membership fee in your own decision. You have to discuss with the leadership in your mission group and make a decision through the meeting with the leadership and decide to use that money to help that person. You should not 
recklessly use God's finances, even as an accountant. After a decision is made, you have to write things down. Even in church, when there this is a, was a custom in the church and so this year every year the church's accountant and um, there there should be some investigation regarding the church finances every year and the shepherd also ordered that it had to be done and it was there should be no wrong or fault according to the word of God but at some point this custom had, this custom should remain so we have to again do that at the end of the year you have to investigate whether church's finances were used in each group small groups or cell groups there should be monitoring and investigation and and you have to make sure to follow the custom so that everything is done. It's not to find fault with others, but not to make a mistake because we don't know. And through the investigation and monitoring, we people should not build a wall of sin because they don't, do not know it. While they carry out their duties, they should not build a wall of sin. You have to also be this is beneficial for us ultimately this is not a burden you have to prepare it in advance you have to make sure to do it and so that there should be no mistake and keep in mind that talking about the servants of God backed by His power or works of the Holy Spirit relates directly, directly to God. Thus, we are to be highly cautious not to judge or rudely speak of the areas governed and controlled by God. Saul was rejected by God because he severely committed evil, but as he had been a king anointed by God, David did not take his life to the end despite his dire situations. In this way, a person who respects, he was, because he was called by God, he just committed things to God. In this way, a person who respects and fears God treats everything that belongs to God with reverence. I hope that all of you will act with a humble heart, not only in the name of God, but in all areas related to, but in all areas related to God, so that you will not take God lightly. You will not take God lightly, ever. Dear brothers and sisters, the third reason that using God's name in vain is classed as sin is that it is lying in God's name. As we find in the Old Testament, false prophets were often there in Israel's history. They deceived the people by proclaiming things that God had not said as God's words or His prophecies. Even though God did not say that, they say that it was God's words. They deceived people by doing so. Deuteronomy, the Bible tells us of God's strict warning against these people. But the prophet who speaks a word presumptuously in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or which he speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. It says that if you dare to lie in the name of God, the sin is punishable by death. Even though something is not God's word, even though it is not inspiration from God, people say that it is a word of God, it is a will of God. This is lying. This is punishable by death. The Bible says, Revelation chapter 21 verse 8 says, But for the cowardly and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and immor immoral persons and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, their part will be in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Here, the liars means those who lie in the name of God. 
If you are condemned as sinful by lying in the name of God, you invite judgment upon yourself. These not only include false prophets, but those who vow in the name of God and do not keep their oaths, they are also lying and taking God's name in vain. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 20, 12 says, You shall not swear falsely by my name, so as to profane the name of your God, I am the Lord. But there are often instances where even those who believe in God lie in His name. For example, there are people who say, In prayer, I heard this voice of the Holy Spirit. God inspired my heart this way, even though they are not God's works at all. When something happens, some point out that it is God who has done it. It's not an issue when it is truly God's work, but the problems occur. When people get into the habit of saying it's the voice or inspiration of the Holy Spirit, when it's not. As a child of God, you should definitely hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and be guided by God in everything. However, just because you are a saved child of God doesn't automatically mean that you can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. As you get rid of sin and fill your heart with truth, you will be able to hear the voice more accurately. Those who do not live in the truth but befriend the world cannot hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Some people, full of untruth, think what comes out of their own thoughts is the work of the Holy Spirit due to a heart full of desire to boast and show off. These people are lying not only to others around them, but also to God. Even if they are able to hear the voice of the Spirit a little, until they can hear it 100%, they need to go through training process. Thus, when the ability to discern is not yet complete, it's important to refrain from assuming that something is the work of the Holy Spirit. The same, the same goes for spiritual experiences like dreams and visions. For example, there are God-given dreams, dreams people have in their own thoughts, and dreams from Satan. It's not right to say God has given you a dream when it's not from God. When someone speaks in the name of the Holy Spirit, it's also important to be cautious as a listener. Even when a little one says to me, the Holy Spirit has said this to me, I wouldn't ignore nor refute it. This is because if by any chance the voice is from the Spirit, I cannot go against the Holy Spirit. Of course, I can discern if what another person says is true, as I can also hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. But I, I wouldn't imprudently conclude whether it's true or not until I pray and know for certain. When someone speaks in the name of God, it's important that both the speaker and the listener be always cautious. There are those who say God has stricken them, though they've committed sins and are suffering disasters due to the works of Satan. When things go their way, they say how they pray to God and receive blessings. But when things go bad, they change their word and say God has put up blockades. There are people who inappropriately use God's name. These people may call it a confession of faith, but a true confession of faith from the heart differs from such a careless and flippant way of using God's name. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 6 tells us, In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. The words in your ways acknowledge Him does not mean to use God's name at every moment. A person who acknowledges God in all things is to be more faithful, careful with the name of God, 
and strive to walk only in the truth. Dear brothers and sisters, God is extremely particular and detailed, never placing a word in the Bible haphazardly. For example, God uses the most accurate expression. God uses the most accurate expressions when addressing His believers. There are times when God says "beloved," and times when He when He uses the word "brothers." If God says "beloved," when He is to say "brothers," the meaning becomes different. Because God loves them, because they live according to the truth, God calls them beloved. So, the word of blessing follows. God, but when God uses the word brothers, God. There are deep meanings behind these words when He called His believers. It is more interesting to know. In John, the Apostle John used specific word, and there are differences in these words. God, when God uses, God blesses us, or when God exhorts us, He uses a different word. If God says "beloved" when He is to say "brothers," the meaning becomes different. God also uses the words as fathers, young men, little children, or children, and they have meanings that they have meanings that correspond to their levels of faith. This is the same for many names describing the Trinity. In the Bible, are many names referring to the Trinity, like Jehovah, God the Father, Messiah, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Lamb, Spirit of the Lord. Spirit of God, Spirit of Holiness, Holy Spirit, etc. Each of these titles were not used without a purpose, but recorded according to the context and situation. God, who is perfect, also wants His. In the Genesis lecture, we learned the meaning of these terms, like the differences between the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit is referred in different ways in the Old Testament time and New Testament time. In the in the Old Testament days, the whole. The Spirit of God, but in the New Testament time, after Jesus carried the cross and became our Savior, and and the Holy Spirit came to dwell in our hearts. That's why the Holy Spirit is referred is called in a different way from the Old Testament. There is such profound meaning when the names. Are used differently. God, who is perfect, also wants His children to act and speak in appropriate and complete manners in the Lord, and we are to be all the more accurate in expressing the precious name of God. The latter part, uh, the Bible says, "Those who honor me, I will honor, and those who despise me will be lightly esteemed." If you honor God from your heart, you will naturally not take His name in vain, but instead fear Him always. I hope that you will fear the great and mighty God. Always stay on alert and pray, and examine your heart, thereby leading a life of only giving glory to God. In doing so, I pray in the name of the Lord that you will receive veneration from God and have all your words and actions ensured by Him. May God treasure you and honor you and lead you to the most glorious place in heaven. Let's think over the message in our prayer.
하지만 신앙생활하고 하나님을 부르며 믿고 경애한다 하면서도 망령되어 일컬었던 것이 무엇인지 이 시간 세세히 말씀드렸으니 이 말씀으로 우리의 언어 습관 또 생각과 또 기도와 우리의 삶을 돌아보아 더 경애하고 거룩한 모습으로 변화될 수 있도록 도와주옵소서 과거에 혹여 잘 분별하지 못하여 하나님을 망령되어 일컬었던 것이 있었다면 다 용서하여 주옵시고 이제는 더 하나님을 신실히 섬기고 사랑하는 이들이 되게 하여 주옵소서 감사드리며 우리 주 예수 그리스 도 이름으로 기도하옵니다. Thank you. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 환자를 위해 기도합니다. Let me pray for the sick. 여러분들은 마음의 손을 가지고 가슴에 손을 얹고 기도 받으시기 바랍니다. Father God of goodness, please lay your hands on all the believers who are receiving this prayer. All my members who are NGC viewers, please work for them and work with your power and fire of the Holy Spirit. Lay your hands on them from head to toe, all their joints, bones, and tissues and cells. All diseases, all germs, and all weaknesses be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, all diseases and germs be scorched and healed by the fire of the Holy Spirit and be perfectly healed. Whatever disease they may have, whatever internal, whatever infirmities, please strengthen them and make them perfectly healed. Whatever they may have, coronavirus, or be perfectly healed. Lay your hands on their lungs and their uh, organs. Let them have nothing to do with coronavirus and protect them with your blazing eyes. Protect them from epidemics. There are, please protect them from all contagious and diseases from the world. Please strengthen their bodies, uh, body, body parts and organs. Please strengthen them with new energy. Please protect our members during the week. Make them live in peace. Protect them from accidents and disasters. Help our students do their duties well. Let them pray more fervently and stay on alert. Please protect all our mommy members in and out of Korea, all over the world. Always, thank you. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.